That's tomorrow. And that is it for us today. And we will leave you with a, I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. And thing sucks. Five, four, three. Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? Lockout men back in the building once again with another podcast interview. Well, it's not much of a podcast interview because this right here is being simulcast live while I'm doing this podcast interview. You know what I'm saying? So I want to say what's up to the whole LOM community out there. Mom, Deuce, love. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm blessed. You know what I'm saying? Want to make sure that everybody out there can hear me good. Can y'all hear me good? Give me some thumbs up if, if you guys can hear me good. If you guys can hear me good, good, hit me with some thumbs up. You know what I'm saying? So we about to we about to get right into this right quick. So I have a driver. That I will be bringing on in a minute because I gotta I gotta call him up and all like that. But before I call him up, uh, the situation with with this particular driver happened back at the TA. Now, I, I'll let the driver explain the situation, and then I'll let you guys figure out whether the situation, I guess was okay you know what i'm saying so before i bring on the show i gotta go up here right quick and uh grab my other phone so i can read you guys comments pretty good so hold on for a second booyah i can i can read you guys comments as again if you guys could hear me give me them thumbs up let me know if you guys can hear me well uh we about to right now we about to we about to jump into it we about to bring to the line well hold on before i even get into all of that i gotta make sure i set all have everything set up and all like that but uh oh yeah and go all right all right all right our first caller of the show Truck that master chef trucking was good. Hello, hello. What's going on? What's going on, bro? Ham, what's up, Lock? How you doing, man? Man, I can't call it. I'm just over here chilling at the at the hotel, but I decided to go, you know, come out here to the truck right quick and get in this good background so I can uh get this uh this uh interview slash situation out the way with you, man. I mean, you know, I came across <laughs> your. I came across your 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 live feed. Well, was that a live feed? I, I think well, I think it was a live feed, and then it was just you know I just caught it on the replay. But yeah. brother man, well first thing first, let me go ahead and introduce you. Let me bring to the show Mr. Chris Streeper to the show. Wait a minute, hold on, wait quick game game. God damn it, man, Mr. Chris Streeper to the show. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mr. Chris Streeper, he's a friend of the show. Me and him chopped it up before. You know what I'm saying? Good guy, good guy. Uh, so, brother man, uh, what happened? I mean, they called the they they called the cops and man, I got the fuzz called on me, bro. <laughs> so what what happened? What what happened to you in trucking, man? What 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 the fuck, man? What's 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 going on, bro? Talk talk to him. It's like you know what it, it happened all over this whole COVID mask thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, I know it's a sensitive subject with people, and I know very you know, people have very sensitive both sides of the argument. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not trying to be political with nobody, but uh, 
You know, since this whole thing started, I have not worn a mask a single time. And I know where I've been in 38 different states. Okay. Okay. So let me, let me, let me, let me, let me pause. Let me pause. Let me pause right there. Why haven't you worn a mask? I mean, you know, they, I mean, the CDC, the government, everybody is saying in order, in order to curve this, this uh this pandemic it, everybody got to everybody got to file suit with it uh me personally right. me personally i'm not sure i'm not sure how it's caught uh when it first started they said put gloves on keep gloves on wash your hands stay your distance but then in the midst of everything else they said start wearing masks so what is it is it airborne? Is it is it touchborne? What is it? You know what I'm saying? Now everybody is in this, you know, in this pandemic thing over here talking about wear your mask, wear your mask, wear your mask. You must wear your mask. We recommend you wear a mask. Why haven't you wore a mask? I mean, if I'm, if I'm straight up about it, I, I don't think it's that big a deal. I mean, that's, I, I call it like it is. I don't. I don't think this virus going around is that big a deal. I'm not saying it ain't real. I'm not saying that people ain't died. But my education and background, and military background, and everything that I know, this isn't really that big of a deal. I think it's been more politicized than anything else. Um, like you, I travel all over the country and I see what's going on. I'm not in the little bubble inside my town or inside my neighborhood scared by the TV. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, I don't think it's that big a deal. And I also know that, uh, again, background and experience, that those masks really don't do anything. Okay. If you look at the CDC's website, it Mm -hmm. says, wear a mask at May, M-A-Y, May, not will. May help prevent right. the spread of this virus. So you said and, uh, as you said you know, keyword, because, uh, keyword. You you're said up keyword. In, you're up in Cleveland. Yeah, your keyword there is May. Mm-hmm. But as you know, you're up there in Cleveland, so you're you're a Buckeye like me, right? You know that uh, our governor just got tested and came up positive and came up negative in the same day on two separate tests. Wait and. Supposedly, mm-hmm. he's been following all of this to the T, which tells me one of two things: either he has been following it to the T, and the mask regulation doesn't work, okay, or the tests are bad, which again points to more. Hey, masks don't work, and we're not counting this stuff right. But anyway, like I said, I don't want to get political. Just my my education and background. It, I don't think it's that big a deal, and I'm not worried about it, and I don't see the need to wear a mask. And the government and many businesses, Pilot, TA, you know, Love, Petro, all of the big major truck stops have uh, said, hey, if you have a health-related reason that you feel you can't wear the mask, no. Okay. Okay. Now, okay. I fall into that category. I'm a disabled veteran, and I choose not to wear it. So, basically what happened, I went into the, the Petro, to a Petro in Bordertown, New Jersey, that I have actually been to several times throughout this uh, COVID pandemic issue. Right. And where I've been to several times without issue, and uh, walked in, you know, tried to get fuel. They were out of fuel, went park my truck, and... Uh, Walked inside to go get a shower and a bite to eat and wouldn't be served because I didn't have a mask on. And I told the, the cashier, I said, well, I've got a health exemption. It's okay. I've already talked to TA. And I had talked to TA customer service about it. They said, oh, yeah, you're fine. Just to double check because I wanted to make sure I don't want to cause no problems. You know, I'm a, I'm a chaplain. I'm not trying to go out and cause problems, but I also... I'm going to do what I'm going to do, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, the, the cashier said, hey, I can't serve you. And before me and her got done 
having our conversation, I just said, hey, you know, I've got a health exemption. The manager came around the corner and said, unless you put a mask on, you need to leave. And he was really straightforward about it. And I said, well, excuse me, sir, I've got a health exemption. I don't right. have to wear one. Now let me let me and, ask you uh, let me ask you this Chris. Words out of his mouth, well, you'll love this, but the next words out of his mouth were, "I don't care, put a mask on or leave." Oh, okay. So let yeah. me let me and, ask you this, Chris. You, you you mentioned that you said you had a health exemption. Uh, yeah. Did you did you by chance have that in writing that you can that you could have gave to him, or did you uh you you just no, and you're not just, required to. Oh, okay, okay. And then, yeah. the, and then See, they, and this is the, the thing about health exemptions and disabilities that a lot of people don't realize. Um, the ADA, which is the Americans with Disabilities Act that was passed um, back in the late 70s, early 80s, clarifies what businesses can and can't do or what businesses have to do to accommodate people with disabilities. Mm-hmm. In that legislature, it says that people with disabilities or claiming disabilities are not required to carry around documentation to prove their disability. Now, HIPAA law, which a lot of people talk about is a health, you know, health privacy law, which don't really apply in that scenario. But HIPAA laws also say, unless you have a need to know, it does not have to be disclosed. Furthermore, I was in New Jersey and the governor's mandate, which was uh, Governor's Executive Order 122, specifically said uh, businesses or agencies of the businesses or anybody involved would not uh, legally be allowed to request documentation verify. So I identified myself and I said, hey, I'm a disabled veteran. I fall under your health exemptions. I've already checked with your company. And I'm I'm in accordance with your guidelines. All right, and so see it that way. So Chris, now and, uh, now, now <laughs> since you said yeah. since you said earlier, and uh, since you said earlier that you know this is a hot this this is a real hot topic right here, for real for real. And I got I I got people I got people in the chat room just going like just going off. Uh, the one oh, I'm the, sure. the the one the uh, the one says. Uh, the one says, uh, Jeremy, he says, what kind of health problems that you that you have that you can't put a mask on for a minute? That really doesn't matter. That's really nobody's business. Gotcha. But there's a long list of them. And needless to say, I'll say this. Mm-hmm. I've got at least a handful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That, that's what's up. And, and really, that's my business. You know, it's not anybody else's business. Now, you know, I, I agree. And, and, and here's the thing. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying is if, you, if you're going to put forth loopholes and exemptions, don't be mad when somebody jumps through them. Mm. And that's all I did. That's what's up. There was the avenue. The avenue was presented for the exemption, and I chose and continue to choose to exert my right to exercise those exemptions. Not you. And that you. should be a non you know, non conversation. That should be all there is to it. Now you know that this now now you know that this is this is like this this touches like a lot of a lot of things and it touches a lot of people that may or may not know uh that may or may not know about anything. I mean we as we know as we seen and heard. We know from the news. We know from we know from the news that this pandemic had had uh, uh, claimed a few people, right? We we yep. know we know that by the news, right? So I mean, I I feel just as strongly as you do. Like it's it's my choice whether if I want to wear a mask or not. You can't you can't make me. You can't force me. You can't you. Can, I'm a grown ass man. You can't make me if you know not to wear a mask or not. I choose to wear a mask. You know what I'm saying? Now, what do you say to the people that's that that before you continue, you know, continue the story? But what do you say to the people that 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 choose to wear a mask versus people that doesn't? I mean, versus people that doesn't want to wear a mask or that want to or that want to put you in a box to make you wear a mask. What do you say to people about that? 
I, 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 listen, I, if you want to wear one and it makes you feel safe, do your thing. If I want to wear, don't want to wear one because I feel fine and I, I don't see this as an issue, you know, do that. You know, people that want to get uppity about it, like that instance, mm-hmm. and say, hey, you can't come in. Okay. Well, guess what? I won't shop there. I'll go to somewhere else that'll let me spend my money there. That, but like you said, we're that's grown the men. That's, that's the choices. You know? Exactly. And, and I've, I've had friends that have gotten it. I've, I actually had a real close friend who uh, died earlier this year with it. You know, people would say, oh, you don't, you know, you have been touched by that. That's why it's not serious. And, and quite frankly, I have. You know? And I still don't see it as that big a deal. Miss, you know, Mr. He died with complications of that that uh, COVID, along with some pneumonia, was actually in a coma for forty five days before he passed away. So yeah, I know people that have that have gone through it and had issues with it, but I can also see the numbers and the science and the data, and the data doesn't lie. The data says that this isn't much worse than the regular flu. If you get it, yes, respiratory wise. It's going to knock you on your butt. But data-wise, versus going to the hospital or dying, it's not really that much worse than the, the seasonal flu. All right. Mr. Washington says that you can still catch the virus even while wearing the mask. So you you, yep. feel, you, you feel that's true? Oh, absolutely. You know, most of the masks that, that people have on are not the type of masks that are going to keep you from catching any sort of airborne illness. Okay. And that's just a fact. Um, the, the reason that, you know, a lot of people are talking about, well, surgeons wear masks, you know, and, and the, the masks that we see out available at truck stops and wherever, they're really one time only disposable masks. They're not made to protect you from a respiratory disease. What a surgeon wears it for is to protect himself from getting any kind of bodily fluid or blood or mucus or anything onto his face while he's operating and to protect the patient from getting any of his bodily fluids on the patient or in the patient. It's not designed to protect you from a cold or anything else. So this this idea that these masks are going to protect you from getting an airborne illness are false. And again, that's why the CDC's website says may help. And that's why originally Dr. Fauci, who is the CDC doctor, said, you know, there's no reason to be running around with a mask when this started. You know, they've backpedaled. And like I said, I think it's really become politicized. Uh, and I hate to get into the political arguments of it, but it, it's not going to protect you from that much. It's, it's, it's like wearing a hard hat under 10 tons of bricks. You know, if those bricks fall on you, you're still going to die. The hard hat ain't going to help. It's to, it's to make you feel comfortable in that situation. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. So go ahead and finish up the story, man. What, you, you, uh, the, you know, you still talking with the, with the, the manager of the TA and yeah. sort of got heated. So we were. Yeah, well, I didn't really get heated on my part. You know, I, I stayed cool. Um, like I said, the first words out of his mouth were, I don't care. You're going to put a mask on or you're going to leave. And I again, I said, excuse me, sir, I have a health exemption. I'm just trying to get a shower and I'll be on my way. Mm-hmm. Because I don't think you heard me. In the state of New Jersey, you're going to put a mask on or you're going to leave. Mm-hmm. And I said, sir, I don't think you're understanding me. <laughs> I have a health exemption. I'm not going to wear a mask. I don't have to wear a mask. I've already checked it with your company, and they said I'm fine. And he goes, well, I guess you can talk to the police then. That was, <laughs> that was the next thing out of his mouth. And I was like, I was like for real, you're going to call the cops over this thing. I'm telling you, I've got an exemption. I've already talked to your company. He goes, I don't care. And he pulled his phone out and started dialing the phone. I was like, that's fine. Well, I guess I'll wait over here, and I'll talk to the police. You need to wait outside. You don't have to mask on. I said, I'm just going to wait right over here. I said, I'm going to keep my social distance. <laughs> I waited on the other side of the counter for the police officer to show up. And uh, less than five minutes later, police officer came in. And, you know, he did what police officers do. He squared straight up with me. And the first words out of his mouth were, it's time for you to go. Mm. I said, sir, 
I've already explained this to a manager. Let me try to explain it to you. I'm a disabled vet. I have a health exemption. I've already talked to TA. They say I'm good because when it's New Jersey, you have to have a mask. And I said, yes, sir, I understand that. I also know that according to governor's orders, these are the exemptions. And I listed five or six of them off. And I said, several of those I have. I'm completely in accordance with your state's guidelines and this company's. I don't see what the issue is. Because, well, I don't really care right now, and I don't have time to argue with this. So it's time for you to go. So I got, I, I, I got, I got the, I got the video, bro. Um, I got, yeah, well, I, so that was I got, outside. So I got, I got the video right here. Yeah. So as yeah. you see, I'm right here with an officer of the law right now, New Jersey's finest. I'm being refused to buy a shower at the TA in Bordentown, New Jersey. I've explained to both the manager and this officer who's been polite, he doesn't want to listen, but he's been polite, that I'm a disabled veteran, I have a medical exemption to wearing this mask. I'm not going to wear a mask, I haven't worn a mask the entire time. He's told me that I'm required by law to present paperwork documenting my medical exemption. This is not required. Now the here's the confrontation. Mandate. For what? I need your ID. For what? Because I was calling you because you're refusing to wear a mask. Okay. And why do you need my ID? Because you're not. Okay. And now I'm being required to show my ID. That's fine. I'll show you my ID. All right, now I'm being required to show my ID because I didn't wear a mask. Because I need to issue you. Issue me what? I need to give you this. What is that? I need to identify who you are. Okay. So I can put in what is report. that? Because if you want to report. I didn't ask you for a report. Well, this is the card, <laughs> isn't it? You, I asked you for a business card with your name and badge number on it. My name and badge number is on here, and okay. I gave it to you. Okay, I so I don't need a report. Card. Okay, then I don't okay. need it. And you That'd don't need my ID, then. They want you off the premises, so you can go to your truck and you can leave. Well, I'm not leaving. I'm out of hours, and I can't drive. You can't. A police officer is telling you to move. Yeah, there's nowhere for me to go. police telling you to move. Well, you can go over to the Lux. There's no parking at the Lux. I came the from the Lux. <laughs> well, I don't tell you. I don't know what to tell you either. I'm not leaving. Right, so they're gonna leave. Federal law says I can't drive my truck. Wow. Well, guess what? Okay, I wanted to. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, we went round and round a little bit. Wow. So. So. Yeah, he escorted me outside. I he wanted me to show documentation, and I told him I wasn't required. I asked him for his card because I wanted to call the department, and uh, he escorted me outside and mm -hmm. talked to the manager one last time, and I said, "So just to be clear." You are refusing me service, even though I have a health exemption and I've already declared that. And uh, he said, yeah. So, yeah, we went out there. and I don't know what happened, but something kind of told me I needed to get my camera out. And, uh, yeah, you saw what happened. He came over and that also had a piece of paper in his hand. He, had, he was over there a long time. That's, and, uh, that's, that's He was, he was going to stroke me a criminal trespass or something like that. Um and he asked me for my ID. Now, if now you're at, familiar the, at, the, with at the part when he was asking, at the at the part when he was, and, Chris, Chris, go at, ahead. at the part where he was asking you for your ID, what was the purpose yeah. of asking you for your ID if if you was already told that you couldn't go in without the mask? Well, and that's the thing. There was there was no purpose. So if so, here's the thing that that people need to know about confrontations with law enforcement officers just in general there's there's levels of evidence that go up and one of them is just you're generalized there right you haven't broken any law you're having a conversation with a police officer you are not required to identify yourself in that situation now if they have probable cause or reasonable suspicion to believe you have committed a crime then you do have to identify yourself and you do have to provide your id um and at that point, there was no crime that I had committed, which is why I said, well, what do you need my ID for? Um, but again, I'm going to comply. Hey, you know what? You want to see it? I, I got nothing to hide. Here's my ID. He wanted my ID because he wanted to put it on a citation. That's what was in his hand. But if you notice, he crumpled that up towards the end. That's when I was like, okay, hey, we're done. Hey, if you're going to crumple this up, I'm done talking to you. And I walked away. Mm. Uh, he kind of followed me a little bit, and then we had another conversation about me moving the truck, um, in which you know they backed down on it yeah, I because I said, "Listen, if you're out of hours, federal, federal, you know, well, technically federal law 
says that you can't drive. And that's, that's what I was explaining to him. I said, listen, right. you're telling me to move. He goes, I'm a police officer. I'm telling you to move. If I tell you, and I said, no, it's not that simple, Hoss. So let me explain you the law because I probably know it way better than you do. And at the end of a 14-hour day, when I'm tired and I'm already at a safe haven, you cannot legally make me move that truck unless you provide a written order and you and the department are ready to take the liability if I get into an accident. And like, oh, I didn't know that. I'm like, yeah, I know you didn't know that. So you can call a tow truck or you can write me a letter that says your department's going to accept the liability. Other than that, I'm going to go to my truck and I'm going to sit in my truck and I'm going to go to sleep. And I'm not going to go back inside because I don't want to cause an issue. And that's what I did. I went back in the truck and I just went to bed. All right, all right. But I ended up staying at night, and I called uh, TA Petro's customer service. I had a very good conversation with their customer service manager who apologized to me profusely, and there's currently an investigation going on about that situation. The regional manager is involved, but he has apologized to me and said that should not have happened. And, uh, yeah, so... Well, this is this, hopefully this, there will be some resolution. I just don't want it to happen to anybody else. This this is uh this this is a hot topic. Uh, definitely a hot debate. Mask or no mask. I mean, you know, I've seen a lot of I, I've seen a lot of people that's that comes up in the restaurants, that comes up in the stores. I see them with, I see some with masks on. I see some without masks on. You know, I don't see nobody getting. You know uh accosted by anything or asked to leave or anything i go into loves plenty of times and i see a whole bunch of people in there with no mask on and i haven't seen them i haven't seen them being refused service or anything like that i mean you know i i go in i have my little mask on and all like that i just keep my distance from them and and you know but like you i choose to wear the mask you know what i'm saying I mean, you know, but like you, I, I feel that a lot of the news, you know, a, a lot of the news just, you know, mm, is it's just it's just spreading out there. Not to say that this ain't real. You know what I'm saying? Because I I talked to a few drivers that has caught it. Uh, a popular YouTuber caught it, I guess. And now he's all right from it, I guess. But. You know, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I just honestly, honestly, I just don't know how this is, you know, how how this is going to be. I mean, I guess the fear, I guess the fear of everything just outweighs on everybody. You know what I'm saying? I think that's what it boils down to. It's a lot of fear and a lot of propaganda. And, you know, I just encourage people to make up their own mind and, and do what makes you feel safe. I can't believe uh, I can't believe that dude actually said it was a law. Now, now that I don't believe. I mean, you know, I, yeah. I I know I know the government has made recommendations. I mean, even when you go into the stores, there's a sign that says "government requires." Keyword requires. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I guess. The, the the choice is always you though you know what I'm saying the choice is That's always it. you so Chris, so you got to remember the other thing is is executive orders are not laws until they are passed into law by your local legislature so whether that is your city council that passes a municipal resolution or your state uh, your state legislature which gets together in their Congress or our federal government. Nothing is a law until it has been passed into legislation. A government order or a government mandate from some executive is is that. It's, it's a regulation or a recommendation. It's not a law. So if you do not wear it, you haven't broken a law. If, does that make sense? That makes plenty of sense. That makes plenty of yeah, sense. Yeah. So, like, again, I'll go back to Ohio. Our governor... Mike DeWine, does not have the constitutional authority as outlined by the Ohio Constitution to 
make people wear a mask. Technically, he doesn't have the authority to shut down the businesses. There are a lot of lawsuits going through the court system right now because of that. The same way where people were saying, well, I don't know why President Trump just doesn't mandate this across the board, because he doesn't have the executive authority to do that. So I haven't broken a law, and people that don't wear masks haven't broken any laws. There you go. That's, That's important to understand the difference. All right. Chris Streeper. <laughs> Thanks a lot, brother man, for coming back on to the show. As always, yeah, you're, man, you're definitely, good. definitely friend of the show, man. I really, I really do appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, where, where are you at today? What's, 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 uh, what's, what's good? Where are you at today? I am uh, just north of Chattanooga on my way down to Atlanta. <laughs> Atlanta. We'll park it down there for the night. That's what's up. That's what's up. All yeah. right, brother man. Will you uh will you stay safe, man? And uh, you know, keep it moving, keep them wheels turning, stay safe, and I'll I'll get back with you again in another in another one, man. Absolutely. Be blessed, man. Keep doing what you're doing. I seen you in the top fifty now, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm about to I'm about to speak about I think I spoke about that in the in the last video. Yeah, I did. I, yeah, I got. A, I got a regular podcast that I spoke on it. But yes, sir, yeah, I, I am in like the. Uh, now I, I, I am in the uh, top fifty uh, uh, podcast from from a from a blog called Feedspot dot uh, com. You guys, if y'all want to check it out, it's called Feedspot dot com, and uh, the top fifty uh, you uh, trucking YouTubers to watch for twenty twenty. So. All right, bit man. I will get back with you later, and uh, you take it easy, man. Thanks for chop. I mean, thanks for checking in, man. I appreciate it. All right, I'll be blessed. I'll talk at you. All right, all right. So that was uh, Chris Streeper, y'all. <laughs> the uh, the mass controversy is is heavy. It's heavy. You know, a lot of a lot of people. A lot of people don't want to wear it. A lot of, you know, a lot of people wear it. A lot of people don't wear it. I mean, you know, where do you guys fit in that? Do you, do you guys, uh, do you guys fit in the, the, the fear of everything and then y'all wear it or, or, or not? I mean, what, what do you think? Let me uh, go to some of y'all comments because you guys, you, you guys was heavy. <laughs> you guys was heavy. Uh, let me uh, go back. I said certified freaks seven days a week. Wet ass P word. Make that pull out game weak. Yeah. 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 You effing with some wet ass P word. Bring a bucket and a mop for this wet ass P word. Give me.